Hi, I'm Peter, and I'm out with Rachel. Come out, come out, come out, and shine. Hi, welcome to Out with Rachel. I'm here with Peter Schroeder. He's a professor of computer science and applied and computational mathematics here at beautiful Caltech, where we are hanging out today. And he is a leader in computer graphics research, which basically means he figures out how to make the really cool stuff. So when you see movies, all the special effects look really, really real, especially stuff with water, right? That's one of the examples, absolutely. He's a pioneer in the world of wavelets, which I didn't understand. Wavelets, and then small little waves. Yeah, I was at a party. Listen to this. I was at a Hanukkah party with someone who goes here. Yeah. So I said, Tell me what wavelets are. And yeah. he said, really, really, really teeny parts of waves. That's right. And I got That's it. Right. So now That's I feel right. smart enough to talk to you. <laughs> so I'm in awe of what you do, and I feel really excited to talk to you about it. But the thing that was most exciting to me was that I was reading about you, and it said that you were going to school for massage therapy, and then you saw the movie Tron, and that's what change that's, direction that's of your how, life for well, you. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's sort of what happened. I was uh, at the Rocky Mountain Healing Arts Institute in Boulder, Colorado. I was going to heal the world mm -hmm. with my hands. And I did that for a little while, actually. I had a practice in uh, Long Island and in New York City. <laughs> really? And yeah. uh, I, this uh, Tron movie that a friend of mine <laughs> had shown me when I left Boulder to start professional work in uh, New York, just so enraptured me. I had to know how did they do that. So what? What, what was it? Something specific? Was it like the blue light? Well, was it, it was the, the time I, it was warps. The, it was the I O tower. Okay. That um, I had seen before. Uh, and how did they get that? Okay. You'd seen before. Yes. Okay. Uh, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> I had seen it before tripping. Okay. Basically. Okay. And uh, so it's just like. There it is on the screen. And uh, so I moved to New York, I started my practice, and I started kind of figuring out this computer graphics thing. What is this? You know, back then, that Tron was the first feature-length movie mm -hmm. where they used significant special mm -hmm. effects. And uh, then I went from there. I sort of tried out, can I do this? You know, I was talented as a high school student in math and physics, but had since then completely turned away from that. I took a couple classes at SUNY Stony Brook in math, mm -hmm. and in fact, I could hack it. And in fact, the mathematics itself was incredibly beautiful, mm. I discovered. And there was one particular theorem we learned about um, that took me several days of reading the same three or four pages in the textbook over and over and over again, and then finally it all coalesced in my head. Mm -hmm. And it was just this amazing experience that I hadn't had before. And so next time I went to lecture, I asked the uh, professor whether he would have a few minutes for me afterwards because I wanted to tell him how I had understood this theorem mm -hmm. just to see whether I had gotten it right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm telling him, he's sitting in a chair, I'm at the blackboard, and I'm writing things down, and I'm getting more and more excited, mm -hmm. right? And at one point when I had said, yeah, and then it just, you know, and he's like, yeah. And he looks at me and he says, yes. And this is what mathematicians experience every day. Uh -huh. Mathematics is a performing art like violin playing. Mm. And I still see this face today, right? Because he saw in me that experience that he knew very well and that drives us forward. You were in the zone. In the zone. You were in that bliss presence where it's... Call it that. Yeah, Absolutely. Right? Yeah. These are all different words for the same thing. Yeah. And you know, other people know how to In play piano. Yeah. Whatever you yeah. want to call it. They know how to play piano incredibly well, right? And create that experience for themselves. I don't know how to play piano, yeah. right? You don't know the mathematics. Yeah. I know. We all have different kinds of talents. I can have talents. that feeling like balancing my checkbook. And I'm like, wow, I figured <laughs> out 20%. Yeah. So <laughs> the point yeah. is that whenever you deepen the, your study in mm -hmm. one area mm -hmm. and this could be you know piano play it could be mathematics it could be Tibetan Buddhism I don't yep. care yep. when you get deep enough you start discovering these fundamental principles these common principles these simple patterns that give rise and that's a thrill and that drives I suspect most of us working here yeah in some form or another, are driven by that. Yeah.
about studying the mind of God. Mm -hmm. That as I study math, as I study physics, you know, physics comes in because I'm interested in special effects for computer graphics, and you need to make them look realistic to the human eye, and that involves getting the physics right. Yeah. Right? And so you have to understand what are those laws. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, that's really studying somehow the essence of these images that we see, the, the world as it appears to us, what is behind it? Yeah. And hence this idea that it is the study of the mind of God. Yeah. And piercing that's, the veil. that itself, piercing the veil. I mean, we're talking about out with Rachel and coming out about something. Not every scientist is like thinking about this in terms of the mind of God. But you just... You know, people have different descriptions for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's fine. They're just different descriptions. Uh, this recognition that if you look deep enough, there is an essence that appears to transcend all the world of appearances. You know, the famous cave with its shadows mm -hmm. being cast. Mm -hmm. What is the actual thing that mm -hmm. is casting the shadow? They think That's, about that cave a lot. <laughs> that is not uh, a new thing. Yeah. It's been around for a long time. Yeah. And I think ultimately what it says is that when you look deep enough you start recognizing that there are these patterns, these very simple laws and relationships that give rise to the multitude that we see. And that mm -hmm. becomes an awe-inspiring moment. Mm -hmm. And whether you call that a religious vision or an awe-inspiring moment, that's not so important. That has yeah. more to do with whatever your reference points are right. in describing it. And I say all this by saying that there's many scientists, when they go deep enough, who come back with that sense of awe. Yes. They may not necessarily express it using potentially charged terms mm -hmm. such as God or, but that experience of seeing this pattern, all of a sudden it just, shoo, all the trees line up, mm -hmm. you know, because you just change your viewpoint a little bit. Yep. You can see they're all in a straight line. I mean, that is just, that is that experience of, yeah. God, the burning bush. Yeah. I don't know. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is just a version of that. Peter, thank you so much for talking with me today. And thank you all for watching Out with Rachel. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. My pleasure, too. Thanks. Thank you. Come out. Come out.